Trigonometric equations. So in this video we're going to take a look at how we go about solving, um, very much like algebra, solving um, trigonometric equations. So let's jump right into it with some examples. Um, here we have 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0. I know it's an equation because it's got an equal sign in it, and what I'm trying to do is solve for the missing variable. In this case, I'm solving for x. And notice on the right-hand side here, there's some conditions on x. In this case, the conditions on x are going to be on one cycle, so 0 to 2 pi. So um, I won't have thousands and thousands of solutions, but I might have 0, I might have 1, I might have 2, probably a low number of solutions for this. Uh, we will see um, in the next example a condition where we're asking for all of the solutions, and so it turns out there'll be an infinite number, and we need to be able to list those out as well. This is very similar to solving the questions where we just had, say, sine x is equal to root 3 over 2, and we just use ASTC. All we have to do is a little bit of algebraic manipulation before we get to that step. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, our goal is to isolate the variable on one side, and that's going to look like either sine of something or cosine of something equals a number. And then we'll just solve that trig expression. Um, so let's uh, add 1 to both sides. I get uh, 2 sine x is equal to 1. Dividing both sides by 2, I get sine x is equal to 1 half. And if possible, we want to do these without a calculator. Um, we will do some of them with a calculator as well. But uh, this is a um, triangle where the opposite and the hypotenuse are given to you. So you should see that this is a 30 degree angle. And if it's a 30 degree angle, then the reference angle is um, 30 degrees, or pi over 6. And I notice that I'm dealing with pi's over here, so that's why I changed it to pi over 6. And so by ASTC, there's two solutions where sine is positive, and so I can go and get my answers of pi over 6, and this is 1 whole pi, which is 6 pi over 6, take away 1 pi over 6, so 5 pi over 6, and clearly indicate my solutions. Okay, let's uh, try another one, and we'll step up the algebra. Okay, so in this case, cos x plus root 2 is equal to negative cos x. So the algebra is a tiny bit harder here. We'll get all the variables to one side by adding cos x to both sides. That gives 2 cos x, and root 2 is equal to 0. And subtracting root 2 gives us 2 cos x is equal to negative root 2. Divide both sides by 2 and I get negative root 2 over 2. Again, you should be able to identify that this is um, a 45 degree reference angle. 1, 1, root 2. Cos would be 1 over root 2. And 1 over root 2 rationalized is root 2 over 2. So we're dealing with the 45 degree angle. It doesn't say if the general solution needs to be in degrees or in radians, so I'll state both. Um, the reference angle of 45 degrees could be pi over 4, and I need to use ASTC and figure out when cosine is negative. So cosine's negative in quadrant 2 and quadrant 3, so now I can get my two solutions. So x could be equal to, well this would be 180 degrees, or pi, 4 pi over 4, so it's uh, 3 pi over 4, or 5 pi over 4, and the equivalent to this is x is um, 135 degrees, or x is equal to 225 degrees. That's the solutions between 0 and 2 pi, but I want to know the general solution, and so these solutions keep repeating and they repeat every period, and the period of this cosine graph is 2 pi. So I have to add 2 pi n, where n is an integer, 
or I have to add 360 degrees n times where n is an integer. So depending if I want my answer in radians or if I want my answer in degrees, I now have general solutions for both of those. So general solutions will give you every single solution possible, whereas in the example before, I only wanted to find the solutions under certain conditions. Um, the domain in the last one was between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, let's go on to the next kind. Sine x tan x equals 2 tan x, and we're going to find the general solution in radians. So one common mistake with these kinds of questions is people really want to uh, divide both sides by the same amount. In this case, like there's a tan x on both sides. You can just divide that out. Please do not do that. So instead of dividing both sides by anything, uh, move things over to one side and factor. It's a much more successful strategy. You won't miss solutions. This out again. And subtract the 2 tan x from both sides to make it equal to 0. And the beautiful thing about equal to 0 is that when I do do my factoring and get tan x times sin x minus 2, I can say, well, either this first part is equal to 0, or the second part is equal to 0. That's how you can make a number equal to 0. Um, the multiplication of 0 times anything is 0. So now I go about solving both of these things. So when is tan x equal to 0, and when is sin x minus 2 equal to 0? And that'll be my solutions. Now, had I just cancelled out the tan x, I would have had sin x is equal to 2, which is just this part, and I would have missed entirely this first type of solution. So, again, we wanted to make sure we don't lose any solutions, so um, don't cancel things out. Instead, move things to one side and factor, because now I can try and solve when is tan x equal to zero, and this is a special one. If you have the graphs memorized, this is how I do these ones. I think, okay, here's my tan graph, and when is tan x equal to zero? When x is equal to zero, and then it will repeat again over here somewhere, and repeat back here somewhere. And since I'm doing the general solution, I'm going to need all those repetitions. And when is sin x equal to two? Well, sine goes like this, and the highest sine ever gets is one, so when is it equal to two? Uh, never. So this part here has no additional solutions. So my grand total is x can be zero, and I'll list these out, and if I jump ahead or jump back, I'm jumping ahead to pi and two pi, because that's the period of the tan graph, or um, negative. So really I can state this as it's pi times n, where n is an integer. So 0 pi, 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, negative 1 pi, negative 2 pi, negative 3 pi. And there's my general solution in radians. Okay, let's take a look at another one that will also require, require some factoring. Okay, secant squared x, which means secant times secant of x, uh, minus secant x minus 2 equals 0. So um, this is really of the form something squared minus the same something minus 2 equals 0, which you can factor, or possibly can factor. So y times y would be y squared. Uh, the outsides and the insides have to multiply to negative 2 and add up to negative 1, so that's negative 2 and positive 1, so this is minus 2 and positive 1. And likewise, basically, I've just said that secant is equal to y, so I can have that secant x minus 2, so that part's this part, and secant x plus 1 could both be equal to 0. And like I did in the last one, I can set this part to be equal to 0, or I can set this part to be equal to 0. So I'll do that and solve each one. So add 2, secant x is equal to 2. Uh, I can't solve secants, so I'll solve coses, and that means it's the reciprocal. And I'll do the same on this side, secant x is equal to negative 1, and really I'm solving coses, and I take the reciprocal, and I get negative 1. 
So now let's go ahead solving when is cos x equal to 1 half. Well, again, it's the adjacent and the hypotenuse, so I'm dealing with a 60 degree angle, so my reference angle is uh, 60 degrees, which is pi over 3, and cosine is positive, ASTC, in the first and fourth quadrant. So I have two solutions. I'll put them over on the right-hand side here in green. I have a solution that uh, is pi over 3. And I have another solution in quadrant 4, which is 6 pi over 3, take away pi over 3, so 5 pi over 3. Then, when is cosine equal to negative 1, uh, I will use the graph to solve this one. It's equal to negative 1 at exactly pi. So I have another solution that's pi. Um, I'm only dealing with the interval from 0 to 2 pi, so I have no other solutions that will satisfy this equation.